get out the way. Yes. We all get out the way. Yes. And life is here to rise. Yes. Like yes. 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 Let's go. 
I said yes. Okay. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. He just said to tell you, he said yes. Be brave. Be brave. Amen. 
Be brave because you're able to be brave because guess what? I'm with you. Amen. I'm in the room. Thank Come on, Lord, Lord God. Lord. Lord. See, this message that I have to say to you today is not nothing that you have already not tapped into with God if you really, really want to. If you really, really want it. See, this is just a confirmation for a lot of you in this room. Come on now. See, this is not a message of, oh my gosh, I really, no, you're going to be like, oh God, I thank you. My Lord. Because thank you confirmed the thing for Thank you, Lord. Hey. He thank said Lord. to be brave. Be brave. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of us in this room, or you even at home right now, that's watching us on this day. And I thank you that you had an opportunity to be a part of this worship experience in this house. Because not only is he in this room, he's in the room yeah. with you right now. I'm going to say it again to you at home. He's in a room with you right now. And he's telling you to be brave. Yeah. There's a business. There's ministry. There's even forgiveness that you want to go forward with. And some of us are so stuck. He said, be brave. Yeah. There's a thing that you've been praying about. There's something that's been pondering inside of you for so long. And he said, be brave, Mark. Hey, hey, hey. Isaiah 41, we're going to read that. We're going to read it. We're going to read Isaiah 41. These are all scriptures that you should be familiar with. Some may not. Some may not, and that's okay. Because you're about to be familiar with it with us today. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Not familiar in a way where it's like, oh yeah, I heard that before. And you stick to that one perspective you heard it under or heard it from. But God says, open your heart to be, to listen, to hear it in a different way today. Yeah. Be able to listen to it in a different area. Hear the, top, the, the tone of the Spirit of God hey, today. Hey, glory to God. Mm. Amen. Joy said, he says he requires worship. Amen. And worship is just sitting and listening to what the Spirit. Hallelujah. And when we're worshiping God, we're lifting up our hands and we're throwing up our hands and we're just there worshiping God through tears. We're worshiping God through moans. We're worshiping God through thank yous. We're worshiping Hallelujah. And he begins to speak. He begins yeah. to pour in. Robert. Robert. Yeah. God says be brave. Amen. Be brave. Do you? Amen. Isaiah 41, verse 1. Quiet down. Mm. I'm ready for the message. I look at different versions. I did look at different versions. And the message is the one that set well with me in my spirit. Because he said, and I had to look a few things up, and it said, quiet down, far-flung ocean islands. Listen. Ooh. Listen. Yes, Lord. This is God speaking. He said, quiet down, far-flung ocean islands, which is, which is really ocean currents. There are these, these currents. I looked it up. What? What'd you say? My, my word is coastlands. Yes, yeah, coastlands. Mm -hmm. You're right. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, it I is coastlands. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, calm down. Mm -hmm. He said, stop playing. Mm -hmm. Hey, glory. Mm -hmm. And listen. Mm -hmm. Sit down and rest, everyone. Mm -hmm. Recover your strength. Mm -hmm. Gather around me. Mm -hmm. Say what's on your heart. Together, let's decide what's right. Amen. Amen. He said, look, in verse 2, who got things rolling here? <laughs> who got this champion from the east on the move? <laughs> who recruited <laughs> him for this job? Yeah. Then round it up That's and cool. corral, wait a minute, corral the nations. So he could rock shot. Now, I, I think I'm saying it wrong. It says rough shot, but it's together. I said, rough shot? I said, is that rough shot? So I looked it up. And rough, R-O-U-G-H-S-H-O-D. What that means is shoes with nails, shoes with nails, heads in them. So a nail head is not the pointy end, right? No. The head of a nail is the circle part, right? Yeah. Okay, so it says that these are shoes with nail heads to prevent slipping. See, you got to be in the spirit to really understand what God is saying right. about being brave. Right. What he said in this particular text to us just now, he said, look, to the people at home, he said, look, he said, because there's going to be some slipping. You're going to be in areas that's going to cause you to stumble and, and may try to make you fall. But I want you to put, he says, look, you need to be having on some rough shop, some oh, shoes that's going to keep you... Come on, somebody. You see, I'm not talking about the shoes that 
that you go to the store and just put them on your feet. We're talking about the work. You tell me. Please. I need to make that clear because some of y'all are going to go to the store and talk about Pastor Tracy told me to buy some rough shop. And the person will look at you. All right. So he could run roughshod over the kings. He's off and running, pulverizing, pulver, pulverizing nations into dust, leaving only stubbles and shaft in his wake. He chases them and comes through unscathed. Isn't that oh, awesome? He, yes. His feet sacredly, scarily, is scarily. His feet scarily, meaning his feet barely is touching the path. My Lord, scarcely. Yeah, scarcely touching the path. Verse 4 says, who did this? Who made this happen? Who always get things started? <laughs> I did. Hey, God. Hallelujah. I am first on the scene, Lord. and I'm always the last to leave. Look in the mirror and tell yourself, be brave. 
all of us. First of all, it says count on it. You can count on count me. On Hallelujah. They said it's a song, count on me. Count on, because if I call you, you may not answer my call. I need to count on God. Amen. He said everyone who had it, who had it in for you, because there were some people who had it in for you, yes. Jerome. There were some people who had it in for you, Jerome. There were some people who had it in for you, but listen to what God is telling you to do. He said, be brave. Say it, Jerome. Be brave. He said, because whoever had it in for you will end up in the corner of real losers. He said, they're going to be real losers. Amen. And that's the problem. We so wrapped up in who got it out for us. God says, them as losers. Why are you worried about them? Yeah. Be brave and go to the... Yeah. But we stuck. See, we like this. Yeah. We yeah. stuck. We look like we're running. We look like we're doing something. It look like I'm moving. I'm going to read this part to you. I'm going to say this. I got to say this. Did I bring it? Please, Lord, tell me I bring it. <laughs> hey, hey, let me make sure. He said, look, progress, it was about progress. I've been writing notes everywhere. Now, everywhere. I do. <laughs> I'm such a note taker. I, I, and I, it says here, he said, look. He said, no, that's not it. I thought I put it in here. But he said something to the fat, and I wrote it down, and it says, look. Just because it looks like you're moving, don't mean you're in progress. Come on, somebody. See, we can look like, I'm going to come over here so everybody can see me. Pastor Al, can you just pull that back a little bit? I want to show you, I want to demonstrate what I'm saying to you. See, we're so stuck sometimes. We, we hear, and then we got one foot here, and I look like I'm running for my life. Come on, somebody. Ain't that the song? I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. I know you don't like to walk too, but bear with me, baby. Because I reminded him, I said, remember when 
Whoa. <laughs> Mr. A. Ross said to him, you remember what you said? You said God got you getting closer back to his word. It's what the words he said over here and said. He said, God got me getting back to the word. And when he was answering my questions, he said, studying for school is hard work, it's busy. I said, don't forget. Mm. Be brave enough to don't forget. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, Lord. And some of us, I'm going to tell a story about something we all probably read before. We're going to go to Hebrews 4.12 and that will be it for us. Go forward. But what I'm saying, we talk about a different movie. We talked about The Matrix in class this morning a little bit, just a little bit. And then Ron said, I watched The Christmas Carol with the Scrooge, right? That's Scrooge. With the Christmas past, presents, and future, and all that stuff. And some of them can have some great meanings. So me and my mother and Al, well, Al, I think he came in on the latter part of it. And if you ask Pastor Al what one of his favorite Christmas cartoons are, yeah. you know, from our past, we, we all remember that. And we even got the DVDs, but that's okay. <laughs> Tell us all what your favorite is. Jolly Brown. Jolly Brown. Jolly Brown. Jolly Brown. Jolly Brown. Yeah, he liked the Grinch, too. <laughs> but he do love Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> he loved Charlie Brown so much. I did. They had Charlie Brown wrapping paper, and I bought it. <laughs> I just get them in Charlie Brown. But anyway, he likes the Grinch, and the Grinch was on the one with Jim Carrey. I really, really love that one because that one actually tells a story. If you ever paid attention to the one Jim Carrey plays in, just I like that one. He's funny. But anyway, if you pay attention to the story. If you look at how they, they did the story, and, and they paid attention when he was the Grinch at a little age, they used to mess with him, because he was different. He was different, he looked different. They gave him a shaving thing, and the two ladies that he lived with at the time who was raising him, they, you know, they, they kind of messed with him, the kids in school, the popular kids. He had like the popular, the most popular girl in the school, the most popular who, in the who? The Whoville, they was living in Whoville. And he liked the most popular girl in Whoville, but the most popular guy in Whoville liked her too. So they embarrassed the Grinch. It's funny his name wasn't no who stuff. Everybody else was Whoville, but he was so different. So he came dressed up in his favorite tie and suit as a kid, and all nice with his little thing he wanted to give to the most popular who girl. And they, they did something to embarrass him in front of everybody as a kid. And he ran, he ran, like we do, right? We right, run right. to the farthest corners of the dark earth. And we just read in Isaiah, he said, I gathered you from the darkest. My Lord. Yeah. And he stayed there. And he made a life from him there. Him and his dog, Matt. Right? M-A-C-K. Him and his dog, Matt. Yeah. And he just made a life and he just lived there. He never went back to he never wanted to deal with Whoville. And then all of a sudden, there's a little Who girl. And the little Who girl, something happened where she went and she was like, Cindy Lou is her name. The Who, Cindy Lou Who. And she went, and I won't tell the whole pieces of it, just I want you to understand this part. And she called him down and all these things. And she, what she did, and she fought for the Grinch. Yeah. When everybody else, Stephen, was against the Grinch, when everybody else, when the, the, the most famous, the popular girl, and the popular boy, when they were older, they threw a big party, and they told him he won something. So they gathered him around the town of Whoville Art, and they gave him a razor. He ended up having a razor, and they cut his hair, and they made him mad, and he started acting out of anger. But then he, and it was all these things going on. And the little Who girl, Cindy Lou. Who? Cindy Lou Who? Who? Cindy Lou. You who? I know you're being right now. <laughs> Cindy Lou. Who? Was brave. Yes, she was. Cindy Lou was probably eight or seven. And all the adults around her, and even her own people, wouldn't stand up for the Grinch. But Cindy Lou was brave enough yeah. 
Julie, I know you tired of me, but she was brave enough to stand in the center of Whoville and tell everybody that that's not right. He has a good something, there's something very good about him. And when Santa Claus, when, when it wasn't Santa Claus, who she thought was Santa Claus, but it was the Grinch who was coming in to steal all their presents, she said, she was going back up the stairs because the faith of Santa Claus told her to go back to sleep. And she turned around with the cup in her head and said, Santa. And he said, yeah. <laughs> she said, don't forget about the Grinch. I know so many people don't like him. And he has some quirky stuff about him. More. But I think there's something special. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm. Oh, God. Hey, hey, hey. So my question becomes to you, how many of you are being brave for somebody else? See, we are undefeated, and we know that, but are you helping somebody else not, somebody else to be undefeated too? Amen. Are you brave enough in the spirit of God to stand up when everybody else, everybody else is coming? Yes, Lord. How brave are you today? Or do you fold? When your team is losing, do you go find another team? Oh, oh I say that because I'm a cowboy fan to heart. And it's hard to be a cowboy, cowboy fan. It's hard. And so when people, what they do is they follow a player and they bounce and leave their team and go somewhere else. Are you leaving your team? Are you? Are you? And I don't mean your, baby, your football team, your baseball team, or your basketball team. But what about the team that's with Christ? Uh, the one that they say, you see him over there? I don't know what he's doing is really going to stand. He might fall. Yeah. The same God that we just read about when we're supposed to be all together cheering each other on. Amen. What are you doing? How brave? God says, how brave are you being? Oh, I can be brave in the kitchen because I know how to cook chicken. <laughs> yeah. But tell about something else. How brave can you be on your job to stand up for God? Amen. In the workplace. <laughs> how brave can you be to stand up to your probation officer? Uh-oh. 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 Oh, you know, you're talking about my money now. You want me to talk about Jesus on my child? How brave were you to stand up? Mm. Hebrews 4.12. Let's go here. Hebrews 4.12. Be brave. Be brave. Sydney Lou, is that her name? Yep. Yeah. Sydney Lou was brave. Sydney, <laughs> Sydney Lou was <laughs> brave. <laughs> brave. Four, two, Yes, send, yes, you with us, Leslie. It's good to see you, Leslie. You was quiet over there today. You all right, Leslie? You had a good Christmas? You trying to find Hebrews? She said, I'm trying to find Hebrews. I'm trying to find Hebrews. I get you. Who there? Who got it? Because I ain't out here yet. All right, I know everybody like to read. Y'all know how I be at. I'll be like, no, 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 no. But I'm going to let you read today. Alright, I'm going to let you read. Who got it? Who said it? I got it first? Who? Alright, what verse are you reading from? The Passion? Alright, let's hear it from the Passion, 412. Uh, let's see. For well, we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a two-mouth sword, it will even penetrate to the very core of our being, which is where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet, and interpret. That's the Passion? That's the path that interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. Okay, all right. Come on, you else read it. Read from the God's Word. God. <laughs> Matt, you have Tammy and you can read. Okay, God's Word reads, um, God's Word is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword uh -huh. and cuts as deep as the place where soul and spirit meet the place where joints and marrow meet. God's word judges a person's thoughts and intentions. See, Amen. see, and a lot of reason why we can't be brave is because we ain't let the word cut. Mm. We ain't let it cut. And you know what? 
And you know why? Because yes, what does it do? What, who said wow? What do you say over here, Pastor Al? He said wow. You know why? We don't want it. We don't because we can't be brave because we won't let God go deep enough. We won't let it see. We'll just read just enough. Oh, I read the daily bread today. I'm good. Oh, I did my devotion today. I'm good. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get to that book. Yeah, I read about four pages in that book. And I know you was going to read. What do you read? What Bible you prefer to read? Okay, that's the real for, for, for the event. Yeah, let's, let's hear it for the King James. 412. Um, the Word of God is quick. And powerful. The word of God is what? Quick and powerful. Hmm. And sharper than any double-edged sword. That's right. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Hmm. And of joints and yeah. marrow and the sword. And is a discerner of the thought. And then, excuse me, intent of the heart. Mm. Mm. That's some good stuff. It made my teeth hurt. I got dentures. That boy was <laughs> like, that thing. That thing, I'm like, mm. like, see me like that. I was like, dang. Hey. And I felt it up against my spine, my bone, and marrow. And I'm like, wow. Yeah, he know the thoughts. Read it from the NIV. Let him read it from the NIV. That's a new international version, right? Hebrews 4:12, right? Yeah. It says, "For the word of God is alive and active, um, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, mm -hmm. joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart." And 13 says, nothing in all its creation is hidden from God's sight. My Lord, nothing. Pastor Tracy, you should read that message. You want to read? Okay. I don't have that in front of me. Um, you want to read it out loud in the message for us? I can read it out the message. Yes. It says, 12, 4, 12. It says, yeah, 12 and 13. 12 and 13, okay. It says, God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, mm. laying us open to listen and obey. Mm. Nothing and no one can resist God's word. Mm. We can't get away from it, no matter what. No matter mm. what. It says, he cuts us open and lay us out. Wow. He cuts us open and lay us out Jeez. for every intent of the heart, whatever it is, whatever you're trying to hide, we're about to find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Whether doubt or defense, whether doubt or defense, whether doubt or defense. And that's why I say to people, there's no excuses. See, they, people get mad with me. They get mad with people about me. No, there's no excuse. Well, what about them? No, there's no excuse. But well, why? You know what? You don't know what happened to me. You don't know what happened to me. There's no excuse. There's no excuse in God. Amen. Because he says you will never be defeated. You will never be defeated. We just read Isaiah. The prophet, he told us and he promised us that he will be with us. He has a firm grip on us. So why? 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 Yeah. Why do we not? Yeah. Why do we not? Because there's, what did I say in the 
given. That this word ain't for you to be like, oh my goodness. No, it's saying, dang, dang, God. You say, dang, God. You, because you're trying to ignore what God was saying to you. Do we do that sometimes, people of God? Do we kind of push down or suppress or won't kick again? We won't, but put it down and be like, okay, yep, I got you, God. When he's telling us to do a specific Whoa. thing, when he's telling us to behave in a specific way, when he's requiring much more of us, Whoa. did you read the scripture this morning that says, to whom much is given? So much is given was freedom. We had a, we talked about this before. He gave you much, which was freedom. So what are you doing with your freedom today? Are you being brave in your freedom? Are you bringing them through the underground railroad? Are you helping them get? Why did you say the underground railroad? Because you, she wasn't even free. <laughs> That's why I said this message here, what God said this, this message here is for people who really, really want it. For people who's really serious in this season of their life to get closer to God. Amen. See, there's a fast coming up. And there's going to be danger coming at you. You're about to give up stuff. You're not just giving up. You're giving it up for... You think that he's going to just lay down and be like, all right, yeah, you cool. You got it. I'm going to let you get through this fast. Absolutely not. The devil at Jerome, absolutely not. Is he going to just let you just fast and be all right with it? He said to put on shoes with the nail heads. So you can stand. And I know we're talking, oh, that's what it says in, 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 in Ephesians about the, the, what is it called? The Ephesians, the armor of God. But he said, put on shoes that's going to help you stand. Not just the shoes of peace, but the shoes that's going to help you stand. Yeah, yeah. He's going to kill you. Do you understand how serious this is, people of God?
I don't know how much more at this point. But we're going to keep praying for you. We want to let everybody know just keep praying for Jerome. Amen. And I, we keep telling you. What do we keep telling you? Tell us what we keep saying. You you want me to tell you again? Well, you know why? What we keep saying now? No, that's okay. That, that's all right. The devil wants to send you as weak. He wants to do that to all of us, but there's a specific target on you. Amen. There's a specific target on your back. Mm. Yeah, and see, what he's trying to do, he's trying to break you. He's trying to break you with your past, like he does the rest of us. But for some reason, there's a specific target that's on your back. And it's what he does is he keeps sending situations. He keeps sending situations. He keeps sending situations your way. And he's saying you have the answer. I need you to be brave enough, God says, to choose the answer I'm giving you, even when it's not the answer you want. Put your hand on his heart. Even, do you understand what I'm saying to you, son? Even when it's not the answer you want, God says that's the answer you need to choose. Yes, 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 yes. He said, loosen up. He said, let go of the grip. I got a grip on you. You're not supposed to have a grip on. He says, my grip is the grip that you need. Let yes. loose, man. Yes. Simply just let loose, God says. Stop being all defensive about what people coming up and do. He says, I'm telling you my business, but I, I'm not telling on your business. What I'm saying is that I'm trying to warn you and let you know that God loves you this much. Hallelujah. He loves you this much. And he said, I'll put you on first degree so you can get it. So if you choose to not obey, what scripture did we read about obeying just now? Read it again, the prophetess, please. He says, God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey, laying us open to listen and obey, laying us open hey. to listen and obey, Nothing, and, it, yeah. and no one can resist God's word, you no can't one. get away from it. See, that's why he got you up here, because he says, look, I got you, man. Yeah. He says, I want you. They don't want you to stand by. Am I, am I telling me? Is that the right word? I want you to understand. 